Hi there. This time around, my wife has a project for me. She's been collecting these blue bottles for years. There was a time when we used to get supplements or vitamins or something in them, and she loves this blue color, loves these bottles. Now she wants some lids made for them. And she's actually made it a little easy on me. She said that she wants all three lids to be different. Different shapes, different heights. I feel really bad not having to duplicate something, but anything for Gail Gord, they called me. So, I've got three pieces of elm here I'm going to use. According to the calipers, the widest ring around the top here is an inch and three quarters. So I have an inch and three quarters Forstner bit I'm going to use to put the hole into the end. And if that's a little snug, I'll just use a parting tool to loosen them up just a hair. I don't want them so tight that if they shrink it for some reason, they might break this glass. That wouldn't make my day. So let's go over to the lathe and take a look at this. Hope you'll stick around. First thing I'm going to do is round this over using my spindle gouge and turning at 2000 RPM. Close enough to round. Now I'm going to put a tenon on this end so I can reverse chuck it. I'm going to use a peeling cut with my skew chisel. This is my go no go block. One end has this size, this size of radius on the other end, and as long as it's between those two, I know it's going to fit in my standard jaws. So that's ready to go. I have the inch and three quarter Forstner bit in there now. I'm turned this down to 250 RPM, and I'm just gonna put this forward until it's got the whole section, the large section of the bit inside. Alright, now I just want to see how this fits. There's a slight, slight looseness to it, which is what I want. That's going to be just fine. And I think I'm going to go a little bit deeper. And that's plenty deep enough. It's just barely resting on the glass. And I'm going to use my sanding board to smooth this out. So that'll probably take it down just the amount that I want. All right, I'm gonna start shaping this now. Because she wants the three different caps to be three different lengths, I'm gonna make this one with the full length because it's always easier to shorten one than it is to try to make one longer again. And I'm going to be going with my smaller skew chisel to start with, turning at 2000 RPM.
I very, very rarely draw anything out when I'm turning. I don't have a pre-planned item in mind. So I design on the fly, this one being no different. And I'm just going to continue shaping it as I go along. I think I'm content with that shape. Now I'm just going to sand this and I'll be back. I have it sanded to 400 grit. I'm quite pleased with it. Now I'm going to put on two coats of my sanding sealer, which is a 50-50 mixture of Zinsser Seal Coat and Methyl Hydrate. Between those coats, I'm going to sand with probably 600 grit. And then after it's fully dried, I'll carry on with Minwax Poly. I'll be back when I get to that point. All right, ready for the wipe on poly. I'm using satin this time. I don't want a glossy lid or finial to overwhelm the gloss of the blue glass. I know my wife's really fond of that. Now I've put a little bit of the poly in this little cup and I'll just dip this applicator cloth in here and spread it. I will let this first coat dry and put on a second, probably more than that. And I'll be back to show you the results at the end. Well, this works very well for putting the finish on. However, I need these pin jaws so I can turn the other two lids. So I'm going to have to make a jam chuck for this now. I've set my calipers 1 16th of an inch larger than that 1 and 3 quarter inch Forstner bit. When I'm turning this tendon down, I'll be able to put this on here and as soon as it's clearing it well, I'll know that I'm very close and then I will very slowly sneak up on the size until this lid will fit over there snugly. That's my next step. And then I think I will probably cut this off so it's shorter and put a tenon into here. I don't want this to be so far out that there's vibration at this distance. This line indicates the depth of the cavity under the lid and I don't want to go all the way to there I do not want this bottoming out in that cavity so I'm going to steer clear of that a little bit want to tighten this up one more time to make sure it's as tight as I can get it. And I can pull away the live center so I can check this for fit. And I'm very, very close. This has to be snug, but not so tight that it's going to snap it down the grain. Getting very close there. Now 
Now I've just created a very faint burn mark there and that tells me that should be the right thickness. So I'm gonna just try to make this straight all the way across and then try it out. It is so easy to go too far real quick. I think that's snug enough. So I'm going to shorten this piece now and I'll be right back. I just want to cut that off, create a tenon on here, make it fit. When cutting a tenon with a parting tool, and at any time I'm using a parting tool actually, I like to rock it back and forth like this to make sure that it doesn't bind. If I go straight in, eventually that cut could bind. But by rocking it a little, I make that trench a little bit wider. size is good. Now I'm just going to cut this off. I'll go most of the way through and then finish it with a saw. Alright, that should fit in there just fine. Now you can probably tell that this is not running perfectly true. But that's not really that important to me. What's important is that after I get the finish on here, I can take this piece out of the jaws and I can put another one in there when I've got all three of these ready to go. So I've got the next one ready to go in after I prepare the next lid. And with it running at only 100 RPM, there's no problem with the fact that it's not running completely true. All right, let's take a real quick look at doing the second one at 2000 RPM with my spindle gouge, 3 8 inch. I just want to turn this off here very gently and then sand the end. don't want a real sharp point. Start with 280 grit here. And 
then I'll go to 400. All right, I'm just going to finish this like I did the other and do the third one and I'll show you the end results later. Well, there are the three lids that I came up with. And apparently when my wife told me I want three lids that are each different from the other and different heights, what she really meant was I want three lids that look the same except for the heights because she doesn't like these all together. She likes this one. So now what she wants me to do is take the other two, put them back on the lathe and try to make them look like this. <laughs> well, hey, why not? So I'll be back after I get that done and show you what I've come up with. This is such a surprise, isn't it guys? And there we have it. Three of them, similar shapes, if not identical. Three different heights. This should make her happy. We live in prayer. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me today. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope you have a great day in your shop and always be safe. Remember to subscribe if you haven't done so, and thank you to those who have. Hope you'll drop in next time. Take care now.